Well, guys, it's Jason with Cinelinks, and it is my pleasure to sit down with the team from Laser Team, Matt, Bernie, Colton, and Alan. Guys, thank you for allowing us to interview you guys. Thanks for, oh, thanks for having us. So, okay, Indiegogo campaign, which I, I gave you guys a couple bucks, and I went back to refresh it, and it was pretty much done. So, <laughs> one, of the, one of the highest... Uh, goals ever reached on Indiegogo. How did that make you guys feel when it when it just blinked like ten hours, right? Yeah, no, that was nuts. We uh, we did a lot of research for a few months about crowdfunding campaigns, and one of the crowdfunding we, campaigns we studied was Alan's one that he did for Blue Mountain State. Uh, yeah, and uh, and so we looked at the way people did it. So it's like when it you know we put the plan in place and you know basically turned it on. We were really happy with how quickly the audience responded to it. Well, of course, you were announcing it beforehand and everything, so people were just really excited to hurry up and make this thing happen for you guys. Yeah, we were pretty late to the crowdfunding game, so we wanted to let people know in advance that we were going to be doing something in the crowdfunding space. And there was a lot of buzz beforehand. I, I knew friends, hey, did you hear about Richard Steve is doing a movie? Really? I, yeah. So we, we started hearing about this in 2010, I, I remember at a convention or something. Uh, you guys mentioned you were trying to make a full-length feature. Yep. and. So five years in the making, now this thing is done. I mean, how does that feel? You, something. This is something you guys always wanted to do, right? And you yeah. finally got the chance to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, there was a moment after you know we saw the Indiegogo numbers where we thought maybe just head to Mexico, <laughs> 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 just take the money and run. But I'm glad we stuck around and made the movie because it turned out great. These guys are great. Bernie's great, and I'm super excited for people to see it. Yeah, 2.4 million. I mean, y'all were asking, me, give us. 650000 At 2.4, yeah. how much more were you guys able to add to the movie? I mean, did, did you just see the yeah. numbers start ticking up and go, oh, God, what more can we do? Yeah, always. And, you know, I think we're always kind of our, have outsized ambitions about things like this anyway. So in some ways it was like, whew, okay, good, because, you know, we had a lot of plans that we wanted to do and really big things that we wanted to do for the movie. And as we saw the numbers, you know, going up and up, we are like, okay, we're really going to be able to make this the movie we want it to be. And one thing you guys did, you offered a lot of great perks. Mm -hmm. So and you, were really, you were really good to the fans, and they were kind of good to you guys back. I mean, you were offering everything from just recorded messages to memberships to Rooster Teeth. Mm -hmm. and I just, y'all were so good. I guess there's no, nobody had any choice but to not give you guys money. So, you know. That, well, we got lucky because good. at Rooster Teeth we have a lot of different shows. Yeah. And so we can leverage all the shows that are popular at the company and have perks that work with that. Like, we did a lot of stuff with Achievement Hunter. We did some stuff with Ruby. We did some <clears> stuff with Red vs. Blue. It's like... We kind of played, uh, you know, against all of our strengths. And it really, well, it certainly worked. Two point four million dollars is nothing to scoff at. So, on to the movie. Principal photography is done. Uh, how was the filming like for, especially for you guys? With uh, I don't know if you worked before, worked together before or, but we were talking. Well, it was four months of filming, right? No, we did about forty days. For about forty days. Forty yeah. days. Oh, it, it did feel like four months though. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> we shot for some reason. You know, everybody thinks of Texas as being, you know, just super hot all the time but we we shot for some reason we had like the coldest winter ever oh, well, and, and we were shooting at nights i'm from texas i was there so there you yeah. go yeah it was we got, intense we got to like 28 degrees fahrenheit in some days it's like yeah. it never gets that cold in austin texas colton even came back for reshoots in march and yeah, it was still get... cold i was really happy about that that was great we kind of got lake snow <laughs> in, in texas I don't know. and then a bunch of rain and everything but for, 40 days i gotta say though like from having produced a feature 40 days is, a, I still can't get my head around the fact that you guys pulled that off. That's a long time to be shooting. Because every day, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a set amount you're guaranteed to spend in a day to keep the crew and, and cameras, you know, keep the lights on. And the fact that they were able to shoot for 40 days goes to show what kind of quality this film uh, has because you can take the time to, to get what you need. But um, it's uh, just astounding to me that they were able to pull that off. But... Being, being a part of a production that had that kind of care and, and attention and uh, planning involved um, was a, a real treat because a lot of times you can come into an independent film and it's a good idea, poorly executed, and it can be torture, and you can see the, whole, the wheels coming off as you go. And it, this felt like some shows that I've come on you know, after five years where everybody's calm and it knows what's going on and uh, you get what you planned to, to get that day. It's just... The experience was amazing, and I, I, I think it's going to translate to what you see on the screen, um, because uh, what you know, I think what they set out to make is what they got in a big way. Yeah, yeah this the the company Rooster Teeth itself has a lot of just confidence in itself, yeah. and I think that really helped. You know, that like there's tons of times I've shown up to different projects, and you know, love the script, love 
maybe one of the people in it, but it's just falling apart. Everything's not working out. But, you know, because I think the track record of these guys constantly working, constantly creating content, it was like it was just a natural progression to, for them to go, all right, well, let's just make a whole movie. Let's utilize all the tools we have. And, uh, yeah, incredible. It was, it was so great. Well, honestly, from, from experience, you guys do this stuff practically every day. So this is just uh, it's, it's a long, uh, it's long a period long, of overtime. It's a long uh, episode of Achievement Honor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the best Let's Play we've ever made. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I mean, so even we were surprised. We, we have about 40 different shows that we work on at Rishi, but going into a full production movie set was an entirely different experience for all of us, for me and for Michael and for Gavin and Matt, too, as a director, is, you know, these are you know, 12, sometimes 18 hours a day, depending on how, how hard we're going, and it's, uh, it's a lot of pressure and a lot of work, and even as much experience as we have doing it and working mm -hmm. together, it was still a challenge. So, there's a, so we're going to see a lot of heart in this movie. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's everything we, we make. We want to have people have, get invested in it. We want it to have some heart to it. I, I, I think that's great going into it. Okay, so for people that maybe don't know anything about Ladies Demon and haven't seen the trailer, which is out, and it's very good, by the way, yeah. t tell us the concept of the movie. Uh, sure. It's about, um, this is actually based on a real-world event that took place in the late 70s where they got a signal from space. It was a one-time signal, and they were never able to decode it. That really happened in the real world, but our story starts there where they actually were able to decode it. And it was a very friendly, technologically advanced alien race. It was the first people to reach out to us. And they said, told us two things. They told us, you are not alone, and the galaxy is a very dangerous place. And they agreed to make for us in the late 70s a suit of armor for one person to wear. We would raise that human, his whole life be trained, to wear that suit once it arrived. But because it's coming from such a far distance, it takes about 40 years to get there. So our story is in modern day when the, the suit, after all this time, is finally arriving. And instead of reaching our champion of Earth, these four idiots that live outside the Air Force Base where it's coming shoot down the ship. They all put on a different piece of the suit. It locks to them. So instead of one champion of Earth, we have these four idiots that make up Laser Team that have to save the world. Of course, Michael and Gavin uh, from Rooster Teeth are in yeah. it as well. They, um, what, what's with Gavin's mustache? I got that. Go <laughs> I think people who... <laughs> what's for my wife more? What's with Gavin's mustache? People who follow Gavin, like either at Rooster Teeth or through Slow Mo Guys as well, they are going to be very surprised at how different he is in this movie. Yeah, Gavin... It's made a complete transformation for this movie twice. So yeah. you see a very interesting character, develop character development with, with Gavin. Starts the movie not what you're expecting, and then later in the movie changes to another thing that you're not expecting. So yeah. he did a great job. Okay, so that's going to be great to see. So, okay, we got the four pieces of armor you're wearing. Uh, so what, what is your part playing this? Because these, as I'm just saying, these idiots got the armor instead. So <laughs> is it on you to train them now? Right, so yeah, I, my character I think was experiencing a lot of loss, like obviously, <laughs> uh, you know, for a lot of this. But um, I really like that part of the story too because it was it's so unexpected these days. You know, everybody's invincible, and uh, we're we're used to people like existing in a world where they just you, you just feel like they're never going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. And to see uh, the guy that you expect when the movie starts uh, to get everything that he wants gets uh, a, it's. Never, it doesn't get anything he wants. His goals change entirely, and he's sort of pushed outside of his comfort zone to uh, to the point where he now has to mentor these people who he, you know, has always kind of looked down on. But um, it's a, a a good lesson for him, and I think for all of us that um, it's uh, you know the the real powerful um, acts of change. I think sometimes come from uh, those that are more uh, a little more grounded than you know those in power at the time. So word word. So, okay, so the movie's pretty much done. When are, when are we going to start seeing it? Uh, not for advanced people that donated to Indiegogo because they're going to get it first. They're going to get digital copies of it. Uh, when, any big premiere plan or anything in Austin or anything? Well, we're doing a sneak preview tonight. Kind of not of the entire movie, but we got a little, a little scene that we're showing. Uh, so we're excited uh, for people to get a, an early glimpse of what the movie's really going to be like. Um, and then we'll have more news about uh, the release date in a, a few weeks probably. Okay, so we'll probably have... Have to put something so people can go and follow and that's right. Out Come to Richardseat.com like every single day, refresh it all the time. Refresh all the time. It's probably a good idea just to watch the videos. Keep watching Yeah, exactly. You know, make it happen. So just keep going to YouTube, watching all the videos sure. there yeah. as well. Over and over and again on repeat. Go to your local movie theater. Just constantly ask when's it coming. When's <laughs> yeah, it coming. That's right. that also helps. So you should. So we should be going to every. Write yeah. your congressman. <laughs> protest outside the movie theater. Yeah, make a protest. That's right. right. You do realize your fans will probably do this, right? <laughs> yes, they do. Call to action. <laughs> okay, guys, you heard them. So you got to you got to go do this. So, all right. Well, guys, thank you for talking with me. Of course. I can't yeah. wait to see the movie, 
any any advanced screens y'all can hook me up with, let me know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm probably going to have to. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. Thanks Appreciate it.